Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last days of that there Europe in which we're playing as the Central Siberian Republic. I'm your host, Mr. Central Siberian Republic lover, but we gotta talk about that there shining city. Tom's the city on the hill, the shining city from which all of Russia shall be illuminated. A republic of thinkers, dreamers, of dreaming of a better world, not just for Russia, but for all peoples. It's time we reach out to the world to spread our message of benevolent intellectualism. We dream of a future where blue-collar worker is as secure in his livelihood as a white-collar worker, or of a future where all humanity is united in democratic self-governance. A lofty ideal, to be sure, but one that may be possible in due time with the right allies. Now, with that one done, we go talk about our situation. It's one of the best interests of the Central Siberian Republic to conduct sound diplomacy, as it may be our only chance of gaining the upper hand over our neighbor. Some nations may be interested in hearing of our modernist ways, and we should approach other democracies in an attempt to receive aid. We should also focus on diplomacy with the superpowers, as they are the ones the most transforming the world. Primarily the U.S. Could be our best benefactors, they are the defender of democracy on the world stage. They may be inclined to help us, as we are one of the limited democracies in Russia. Next is Germany, and we should most likely show the world our hostilities against them. We will return to Moscow one day. Lastly is Japan, then a more touchy subject. While very imperialistic, Japan is a nearest superpower to us. It would be very well be dangerous if, to us if we were hostile towards them. Some of the salons are saying we should remain neutral towards Japan, yet still, Sakharov and the modernists in charge believe Island of the America is the best way forward. If that angers Japan, then so be it. It's good to have a plan, but we have some comments such as, You hear that? As a sound of people finally resting in peace after I play modernist Tomsk. Someone else says, Finally the truly blessed route. Someone else asked if we do the ultra national Japanese playthrough or campaign, Order 44. I'm not sure they have a unique focus to the time's recording, but we'll see. Someone else says, uh, can you play as uh, Irkutsk, as play in Irkutsk and TNO here? As best and often, and, and yes, I will eventually. Someone else says, uh, I can't find the sub for the new content for Vasily Shushkin. Can you help me? And the answer to that is, it's the second West Russian sub, second West Russian war sub mod for, of course, TNO. And, uh, yeah, let's see a couple more, uh, focuses. Talk to the worker. It's okay. I definitely just want to get the poverty rate to improve. Tea with the bosses. Here from the bureaucrats, which is not great, but not bad. Uh, cultural shift. Uh, calibrated performances will be very good as well. Industrial expertise will, will be going to rapidly improve. A fair deal. We get less taxes, less political power, but more taxable population. Need to consume goods. Poverty will be getting to improve. Two-year to modernity, which is not bad either. For equipment as well. And just doing all this stuff is super important. I, I want to reduce our... Administrative strain on the, our bureaucracy, just administrative in period. So, uh, what could do render under Caesar first? Though the greatest driver of any modern economy is credit. The ability for Russian entrepreneurs to be able to take out loans on the promise of future profitability would, for the companies, is massive. It would spur massive growth in the economies. More secure foreign banks help Russian businessmen grow the companies and overall economy to heights never before seen. However, this is only possible if Russia reaches international financial markets. Our current credit rating is low among the major international banks, and they are not willing to invest and possibly lose money on a nation in such a vulnerable position like our own. We work towards making friends with the financial community and see if we can change their minds. As well as, uh, probably Discord and salons. Ah, uh, because we can. The topic of how to integrate so many new citizens into the salon system has sparked quite the debates in the great uh, salons of Tomsk. Some argue that the common constitution should be amended. I suggest political restrictions that would cast an ominous shadow over a democratic dream. It's important to calm tempers and soothe the chaos within the salons. We need every salon operator to speak if we're going to offer a united front to calm the political system. By appealing to everyone's heart and minds, we'll be able to pull the vast talents of Tomsk together to figure out new solutions to the crisis. Slowly approve. Um, interest rates will decrease. Inflation will decrease as well. Let's talk to the worker first. I was learned decades ago during the October Revolution to ignore the worker and its needs. It's an invite revolution and bloodshed. We must consider all that we can provide the worker after all. <coughs> Excuse me. All of them, uh, all of our work in development or industry, the Siberian plan, and every other economic endeavor we've embarked upon has been for the benefit of the people. What use will it have been if it's just for the capitalists and industrious reaping the benefits of our collective hard labor? In any event, we must be aware that the common worker doesn't get too displeased. Oh, we got to this one too. The tea with the bosses. Just as we must not forget the workers, we should be remiss to ignore the thoughts and wishes of the captains of our industry. It's imperative that we move forward developing our economic plans in tandem with the market so that our nation's business and economy flourish as we implement the Central Siberian plan. Let's sit down and have some lengthy discussions with the most powerful businessmen throughout Central Siberia. And they bring a willingness to cooperate and a good faith in their desire to help the economy grow. We'll bring the tea. And hear from the bureaucrats as well. Above all, Central Siberia, under our vision, is run by and relies on extensive civil service. In order for them to carry out the industrialization plan, we need them to start assigning and delegating like crazy. Before we can rush into such things, we need to hear what the situation on the ground is for, for, is for our bureaucratic staff. Every last drop of information regarding the status of our bureaucracy and our current progress on industrialization must be submitted post haste. Give us numbers, give us stats, give us everything you have. Move it, people! Discord in the salons. With Central Siberia once getting under our control, many problems are starting to appear, mostly under administration. 
While we are overextended, the main issue is with the salons. Any form of cohesion we once had been shattered, and unity within the government is at an all-time low, as each salon has its own idea on how to govern the new territory. Bickering and arguments fill the Duma and the coffee shops, as those loyal to the salon disagree with whatever any other salon has to say. If you do not wish to, uh, our form of democracy is to collapse, we must attempt to keep the salons in the support of the government and end the, end this quarrel. In the future, some of our actions may create cynicism, which could end the system of salons if it reaches too high. We want to reduce the cynicism as much as possible if we do not want the salons to collapse, but that can mean not getting to work on our own projects, so we should balance cynicism with our own ideas. Successfully maintaining cohesion within the salons will keep our democracy alive, and our future actions will very well determine the strength of the Republic. The balance must be kept with subversive parties. Already new citizens. Other Republic are assembling to form new political parties. Some are fairly mundane liberal or conservatives. Others are more extremists, such as a radical Algerian anarchist party or the mere front for dangerous groups of former military separatists or shadowy businessmen. Their progress are limited in some way by Tom's constitution. All candidates have to be endorsed on the electoral list of one of the four great salons. We can further monitor the situation by putting dangerous parties and associations under police surveillance. This will go against our idealist principles, but it will be an invaluable source of information. Once a list of moderate and extremist factions is drawn up, we can encourage moderates to join the salon system and try to eliminate extremist influence. In the Pan-African community, that's nice. Let's keep working with some of this stuff, too. And what do we have? Infrastructure, infrastructure. I'm not really concerned about the whole uh, idealism, cynicism, political outsiders idea right now, just because I want to get a lot of the society stuff done. I will spam the living crap out of it, expand the university system eventually, but I just want to save up stuff for down here. If you want to read about the restore Soviet infrastructure, though, please go right ahead, as well as industrial equipment. Yeah. I want to do these ones first, just because these guys come back again and again and again. And you know, technically the same thing happens with this one up here as well. I don't know, just, ah, screw it, we'll do it anyways, why not? Decrease political outsiders, that's fine, screw it, we'll do it anyways right now, screw it. Yes, yes please. There goes that there, you're league. Ah, so there's some parties. And of course, we can't do anything else but this one, Modernist Appeal to Reason. The Modernist Society, rallying around Sakharov and Kamov, have published an appeal to reason. They argue that to panic is not befitting of Tomsk leadership, and that the problem can be attacked rationally and efficiently. By compiling information on new political candidates and attacking radical network of influence, calmer and senior candidates can be integrated to the salon system, while demagogues and problematic politicians can be left to the wayside. The only need the Republic has right now, the Modernists argue, is for its leadership to maintain a clear head. If you want to about Maslanitsa Mal Week, please go ahead. It's not every day that you smoke. Uh, I see you smoke, uh, Shapshnikov said, emerging through the doorway that led to the presidential office. An occasion, uh, although the general's eyes widened as he got closer, I don't presume it's a happy occasion. Sakharov looked haggard, eyeballs under the corners of both his eyes. Or eye bags, not eyeballs, oh, that'd be weird. The sweet ash and tobacco smell way through the dimly lit room. Are you okay, Mr. Sakharov? I shall I fetch the doctor? He's still up in this hour, I'm sure. No need, Sakharov said. I'm physically fine. If I if it were something physical, it would be easy. Prescribe me a dose of morphine and surgery after I, I would be well. This, he said, pointing to the stack of photographs neatly piled on the desk or the table. This is worse than any physical harm that can come to me. May I turn the lights on, Mr. Sakharov? The president nodded. Weekly, of course. Examine the photos, he found himself staring at images of war. Bodies contorted into painful shapes, gore of the works. All of them b uh, bore uniforms, but they did not care for the ideologies of the living. This, uh, Shapshnikov said, he hesitant. How did you come across this? The War Archives. Mr. President, with all due respect to the position of your office, I must urge you to calm down. Casualties in war are, un are unavoidable. I know that, Sokhrov lashed out. He was silent and then quietly. I know that. That's why I must grieve. For my cause, all these men and women to endanger their lives. The burden of command is accepting the inevitable loss of life. I hope you understand, Mr. President, and subversive part. Several commenters begin to show signs of radical slap belonging to undesired ideologies. Political groups centered around the radicalism are popping up within our lands and our democracy, our borders, and if we don't fix this issue soon, it will brutally tear apart our democracy. We must find the individuals who snuck into our lands and contaminate our flowing wall of intellectual thought with a poison of tyranny. We'll, keeping, we'll be keeping a watchful eye on the commoners and even the political elites for any important developments. In the meantime, our agents will find and crack down. <clears throat> crack down, crack down, crack down. Come on. On any radical uh, political party that may attempt to... Oh my god, come on. Uh, corrupt the peasant minds. We have to nip this problem in the bud. And then work, in the, work them into the system. The bastards and modernists, strange bedfellows as they may be, have countered with a humanist in December's proposal of a policy program of their own. Their joint pro program will see vast infrastructure investment in the new territories, allowing new citizens to get involved with our public society, of course. Over time, their attachment to old ideas and old political factions would weaken, aided by the work of our intelligence agency in dissolving radical organizations. This slow way would, in time, reduce great, greatly reduce re independent pressure on the republic system. This method, counter the Decembers and humanists, as little more than mass deployment of bribes and pork barrel spending, to buy peace from the new citizens, nevertheless. <clears throat> uh, the moderns and bachelors are forced, forging ahead with their own campaign to see the new legislation passed. Alright, so that's not bad. 
Um, we did do the Outsiders Act, which is very good for us. Uh, close out of this. Close out of this as well. And down here. Science. I want to do. I want to do he import heavy machinery next because we just got that one upgraded, so that'll be good to do next. An ultimatum from the West Siberian People's Republic, which I don't know why they're still able to do that against us, but whatever. So we'll slowly and quickly convert these guys over here, and hopefully do okay and give us some time. Twelve days left. Not bad. And how many do we get every single day? One point one five. That's actually pretty darn decent. Not gonna lie, that's pretty darn decent. Machinery, please. Of course, advanced developmental subsidies are very good as well. We just never have enough political power, though. Rock the system. Six days left. Ooh, what do we have here? Anything special or important? Oh, big darn hero. Nikolai Masolov hit the dirt as another bullet ripped through the air next to his head. He sat up as the sons of combat raged around him, his back pressed against the south wall of a brick house. Attempting to regain composure, he rose to his feet and reaped his instructions to himself through labor breaths. Lead the local militia in defense of his village. Easy. He had just not expected there to be so many darn bandits. His arrival to the bandit plague village was almost in sync with the ambush. Now the disorganized defenders of the village were spread out and vulnerable. Nikolai peered across the street where the two of his local men, armed with hunting rifles, stared down at a rusty truck with salvage machine gun fire or a salvage machine gun from a hastily assortment of sandbags. The aging uh, uh, soldier suddenly pulled back behind the wall. Uh, as another hail of lead tore through the thin air, I discovered. He gripped his service revolver until his knuckles were white, drawing a sharp breath before leading out of safety to find a child no older than four and clad in crimson stained dress. Was toddling into the dusty road where the skirmish was going on a mere thirty feet in front of Nikolai. Misty eyed and scared, the small girl cried out for her family as she staggered aimlessly in search of them, nearly in the bandit's line of fire. Nikolai's panic thoughts wandered out to his daughter home before he found himself bolting out of the safety of cover. Bolts bit into the wall behind Maslov ferociously, barely audible over the deafening drumbeat of his heart. The girl's not almost in the street, her bare foot past the brick wall that had been shooting her from the bloodthirsty gunners. Barely a religious man, a curse laden prayer still skipped Nikolai's lips as he drove forward her, his left ear. Now ringing from a barely missed shot, scooping up the girl, the man rolled back into cover as a spray of gunfire dug into the soil where the toddler had been standing mere moments before. Ain't, ain't just fine. Advisory Referendum the common constitutional laws for advisory referendums on thorny societal debates. A supermajority of the deputies of the four salons now request an advisory referendum on the political issue. The referendum is to ask citizens whether the modernist bachelor program of long-term integration or the December's humanist plan of political independent right is to be made law of the land. The campaign is spread throughout the old and new territories. As mandated by the common constitution, the sitting president is in no way enforced to follow the referendum's results, restricting the popular will, however, is likely to have grave consequences over legitimacy, though. We've been raided. That is stupid, and that should not affect us. That honestly should not affect us, and I'm going to cheat. I'm literally going to cheat because of that stupid crap. That literally makes no sense why they would raid us. We are way bigger than them, and they should be focusing on trying to kill their own soldiers off. Anything else. So I'm going to use cheats if we actually lose political power, stability, and stuff like that, because that's stupid. All right. Well, the game wanted it, so I'm going to give ourselves political power here and stability and war support because I don't care. I really don't care. And if anything, I'm just going to exterminate every single one of these pieces of doo-doo. So, I don't care that... Yeah, we switched division templates, but I, it doesn't matter. I, th there's no reason for them to attack us ever. We don't have loot. That doesn't make any sense. Which, in, in my opinion, is just a bug still in TNL, but whatever. I'm not going to tolerate that. Hopefully we get the one we want with modernist, uh, modernist bastards. <coughs> Alright, a fair deal will be good to do as well, but we'll get that eventually. Uh, I'm going to read about Integration Bureau. Anyways, the government is to go ahead with the modernist bachelor plan. To help along this, a new set of Integration Bureau will be deployed in all new territories. These bureaus will be staffed by neutrally appointed bureaucrats and will be tasked with aiding the integration of the new territory in the Republic's economy. Poverty, joblessness, and political radicalism are to be fought hard against. The Republic must be right by its new children. All shall be nourished, all shall be taught, and all shall be made to proud to be li live, their, live in a great nation. Let cynics say what they may, none shall be left behind. This is weekly stability, but that's alright. Helps increase political outsiders. We need more idealism too, but you know, it's got to be a balance. Of course, we're trying to get rid of uh, over the administration. Which sucks. Cool. That's also good though. That's good. 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 Yes, please. And poverty's actually not doing too badly. We don't have a lot of growth at all. And debt is slowly going up. We do have fair credit rating, though. Pretty nice. Surplus every year. Pretty good. Pretty good. More factory output? Yes, please. Thank you. Humanist Decemberist Victory, which is exactly what we don't want. So, I'm going to go back in time and uh, do what we must, but then we'll be dealing with extremists. 
The government has now gone ahead with a program to tackle the political crisis. The wind has been taken out of much of our opposition, however. Some determined critics of our republic remain. Hardliner militants and Novus Obersk and Krasnoyarsk. Intractable critics of the light CSR, anarchist remnants in the Far East, all united in their hatred of our government. Discord has once again broken out in the four salons of the topic of censure. Many argue that the republic is no place for extremism, and that the voices of these enemies of the state should be silenced. Others point out that our new approach to the political crisis, the opposition's power base dwindles by the day. Better let the radicals rage to an ever-shrinking crowd. The president is likely to be asked to make a final decision. And there we have it, everyone. We have the Indonesian war, I guess, but we've totally, fairly dead integration bureau without using consequence. Totally not. But we got more political power and more stability. Now we get 1.75 every single day, which is not enough, personally, but whatever. New friends in the salons. Four great salons have opened new branches all across the nation, and scores of curious citizens begin attending them. Not all of our new citizens or residents find the salon system pertinent, but enough do that the four great societies have seen their membership swell. Dozens of new thoughts, artistic techniques, and political programs have begun swirling around each salon, despite the grumbling of the old guard. The growth of the salon system in the long run is likely as candidate to fully reabsorb the political crisis, and for that reason it could be a good idea for the central government to aid its spread throughout the nation. Arts, sciences, and politics should be democratized. A new set of citizens' assemblies are given birth throughout central Siberia. Who could have think of such a thing? And up next we're going to do this one. Encourage agriculture mechanization, which literally just popped up, so we improve agriculture and poverty. Because we're only at minus 0.3 every month. That's not enough. And there goes the polls. Good old polls. I love polls. Oh, deal with those extremists. With a gauntlet of extremism dripping tightly on our nation, we must decide how it should be handled. The ideologies of fascism, communism, and all their cousins threaten to strike at the heart of very democracy and eliminate the experiment we started. Nevertheless, our mission is to allow people from all backgrounds to have a say in our government. We will we decide to ban the radical political parties and ensure our democratic system. The idea of placing asterisks on freedom of speech contradicts our original message, but it will protect our government from falling into the oppressive boot. <clears throat> Alternatively, we can continue permitting the radical rhetoric to just uh, permit. Uh, 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 at the cost of possibly that one independent party may gain too much support. In the end, however, we should maintain our belief that everyone in the country should have a stay in the government. Stand for freedom of speech and the right to vote because we can always decrease political outsiders and resolve the political crisis. Through cooperation disputes, the four great salons have managed whether the first political challenge will pass to the next new republic. The issues of independent politicians and of cynicism in our nation are far from solved. Left to fester, these twin threats could end up fatally undermining our idealistic republic. There's no reason to despair for a great democratic experiment also gives us the tools needed to weather the storm. We must stand vigilant, remain true to ourselves, and open to compromise. Past next legacy must endure as, if, as its guardians. Guardians, the four great salons must constantly strive to rise above petty politics and ensure that the flame of idealism burns in Central Siberia. <clears throat> ah, happy September, everybody! Go ahead and expand the university system. That's fine. Forty-four percent. A lot of cynicism, but that's all right. Whatever. We'll get there. I correct. No else. Yeah, see, you're going to about that. Please, your head. Yay! 100 days is quite a bit, but next is up as uh, poverty relief. Yes, please. More growth. A little more inflation, but that's alright. Minus 0.29 is still too much for me. Nice. So that's not done with the whole reducing admin strain, because it's down here too, somewhere around here. Um, but we're going to go with cultural shift, maybe. We lose monthly population, greatly increases idealism. However, the, the house, the mouse, and the Doom members ca counter to check salon support. Um, because we get some, uh, what? Academic base and research facilities. Where are we at? Cultural shift. Tomsky, now of all central Siberia, has, greatly, has already made great material and spiritual gains, but why has it stopped now? We've already proved that modernizing our industry and culture has seriously benefited our society, so why not get ahead of the curve with our social policy as well? That's a good question. It'll be ambitious, but we can create a culture instead of laws that guarantee our society accepts every single person on an individual level. This means increasing the rights and opportunities of women that they should get the chance to study and work too. It also means protecting the rights of other groups even if it isn't popular. We'll legislate protections for ethnic, cultural, and religious minorities, and even more con controversially, our population of sexual minorities. If something is out of your control or part of your personal identity, you shouldn't be discriminated against for that. Let's make Central Siberia the most modern and progressive place in all of Russia. We get gender equality, greatly increases idealism, uh, lose some stability though, and then to get decriminalized, lose a lot of stability, and increases more rights. So, there you have it. Not bad. Huh, Free India. It's a woman. Temporary load of the political crisis. Uh, I think I've read that one before, so if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Finally, a moment to breathe. Good. Raising children. Everyone in Central Siberia has a right to study and find a paying and fulfilling career, including women. Historically, our culture strongly pressured women to remain nothing but homemakers while men have enjoyed the freedom of pursuing their dreams in cash to put food on the table. A free and universal child care program will be introduced to all for all Central Siberian families. Whether rich or poor, so that mothers have the same opportunities to learn and work as everyone else does. 
Space priority, yes, please. Come over here and we'll do this too. Ooh, expand the welfare state. We're going to slowly improve more stability, increase the GDP by 5%. We wait just a little bit longer. Uh, as much as I want. A democratic process. Abram entered the warm building, glad to be out of the freezing streets of Tom's, rubbing his hands together. He stepped towards the desk, a short woman with glasses sitting behind it. Good evening, ma'am. My name is Abram Dmitriev, and I used to be a politician in Novosibirsk. How would I run for office in Tomsk? The woman looked up and smiled. Oh, that was very easy. Just sign all these forms, fill out the location you wish to run, include which salon you've been backed by. Wait, I'd be backed by a salon? Why can't I run as an independent? Uh, the woman's fa smile faded. That's not how Pasternak designed. Our unique democracy, dear. You must be backed by a salon or else you won't appear on the ballot. Clear and simple. That doesn't seem very democratic as you have to follow the ideology of a salon, but I guess if I had to pick the modernists one, then so be it. The woman leaned back in her chair. Well, then make sure you get this signed by a modernist leader and bring it back to me. They're going to have a meeting in the convention hall uh, next week. And dear, don't complain about how this is undemocratic. You live in Nova Sibiris, for Christ's sake. You'll get used to it. As we were raising more children. What, almost two a day? Not enough. Uh, a little more growth, which is nice. Debt is definitely going up, but, you know, whatever. We're spending almost roughly equal on civilian and military stuff, so. Not bad. Overall, not bad. We get a yearly splice as well. 1.687. Ooh, goes down. Yes, please. Got the Pochi men raising some kitties. Ooh, we, ooh, ooh. We have more here. Nice. Go to 10. Wow, we actually got that much. I'm going to 20 there. So we got early choppers, and we got some planes as well. So overall, we're looking not too shabby right now. Um, ed rotating education, uh, industrial expertise will begin to improve. Expertise, where is that at? 5.5, we could probably do that one next. A part of the new modern culture we want to instill in our people is a desire to learn and gain knowledge. So many hidden geniuses could be stuck performing menial labor for the rest of their lives because they've not had the proper educational opportunities provided to them. To remedy this, we'll initiate a rotating education program supported by both public and private institutions that will follow any worker who wants to attain an affordable higher education. We can always use more scientists, artists, teachers, politicians, and thinkers, but we can't expect the majority of those who live in Central Siberia to pursue these avenues without a little push. Battle for Italy. Cool. Plus is going down every year. Alienation. Once Akim and Pelican have been a high level official in the government of Orosia doing what he could do to serve his people, the Altai, as well as the newly arrived old believers. These days might be the past. Those days might be the past, but he was no less committed to serving his people's interests. With restrictions of political involvement to the salons and their members, however, he had to join one to do so. As such, he began attending the meetings of the human salons, seeing them as it most closely aligned with his ideals. However, it hasn't exactly gone as planned. What do you say we must focus on improving the city's first Akimen? <clears throat> Uh, found himself asking this as a response to a fellow humanist. They're both at the latest meeting full of leaders and aspiring leaders alike. What about the people of rural areas? Some can afford to wait, some might die if they must. Protecting the welfare of the common man must include all of them. And, and it will, I assure you, though the man replied. With well, a patronizing smile that Ackman immediately hated. The seas must be our priority for improvement because of the, the lives of the people in them are better, so too will the lives of rural people be. I understand your concerns, but for the sake of the villages, the cities must come first. Now, if you'll excuse me. The other man walked past him as though he was of no importance. That was his other problem with the humanists. Ackerman thought. While their focus on the welfare of the common man was well and good, they put too much of an emphasis on the ideas of the leadership at the same time, and too little on the thoughts of the people. As he came to his conclusion, he began to wonder if all the songs had the same nature. Even the selfless lose faith at times, and calibrated performance. Nice. The amount of numbers uh, being crunched, buildings being constructed, permits being granted, goods being produced, and paperwork being filed is beyond overwhelming. In order to help businessmen, bureaucrats, and academics alike maintain and adjust ongoing plans as necessary, we'll consolidate all of our data into one publicly available database that anyone can access. No doubt we'll need to assign several, several servants to manage this data to store full of time, uh, as it will be massive and constantly growing. Inflation will greatly increase, but so will uh, growth. But our interest rates will go down as well, so. A little more debt, but you know what else is here. Yeah, political officer is looking pretty good. Um, oh, spend money operations? Sure, why not? Petroleum activation? Yes, please. Modernized freight train network? Oh, yes. And then fire, fire, hire, or instructors next. Ooh, it looks like we lost a lot of these guys now. That sucks. And Dearman, staring into his. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I've read this one too before as well. I, I read the other one before, so look at you. If you want to read this one, please go right ahead. Hope once lost is restored to the heart. Yeah, sorry not for not reading that one, but I definitely read that one before. <clears throat> ah, fair deal. 
We've heard from both workers and businessmen from all over central Siberia, unfortunately. As expected, their desires do not always overlap. In fact, there's a significant amount of conflict between the two groups, and we need to smooth things over as soon as possible. The government is beginning to strictly enforce an extensive arbitra arbitration process that will hold hearings to resolve disputes between the workers and the bosses. Workers being forced to do so much overtime in the name of industrialization? Arbitrate. Bosses angry at their employees for demanding too much pay to leave? Arbitrate. Any other problem? You guessed it. Arbitrate. By staying out of these matters and allowing a neutral third party to resolve any and all issues, both work and businessmen will say we've given them a fair deal. Our poverty begins to improve. Nice. Very good. Even though taxes go down a little bit more, but whatever. Necessary fat sacrifice. Good. Uh, we definitely want to... Political outside is not bad. That's always easy to do. Idealism is kind of difficult, though. Promote the elites. Increase his political... So we'll probably have to end up doing this one, so we'll get this one. It's a great cultural shift. Good enough, good enough. Sakharov bounded to him with excitement, fueling every step of his gait. In his hollow, in the hollow, quiet halls of the legislature, the heels of his shoes striking the marble floor like a slow rain of stone. It was almost six o'clock in the evening, the sun preparing to sink into the horizon, casting shadows off the spires and rooftops of the city. Reaching into the reaching the sun to Sakharov, laid a hand on his shoulder, something I needed you to uh, see. Must be something interesting if you're running, Mr. Sakharov. Pozbek Kutsnov laughed. I've never seen anyone as happy as when we were set free from the gulags. Good man, what news do you bring? Sakharov sank, hands on knees, panting. It's been a while since we took a good run. Or he took a good run. This, he said, catching his breath, is some groundbreaking news. He looked up to Kutsnov, Kuznetsov, and smiled. The work of the salon sprang off. In what way? I've seen a lot of changes since you took the old man past next place. All of them are excellent, though. You would never guess what I, uh, what I just got this morning, Sakharov straightened himself. Feminist groups proposing, proposing a subsidized daycare, sexual minorities forming societies of works. That's incredible. Kuznetsov laughed. Never thought I'd see the, say, see the day, to be honest. He slapped Sakharov's back. Well done. Thanks, there's still more work to do by you. Good lord, Professor. Back in your achievements. Bask in your achievements a little, Sakharov smiled at him. Maybe I should, but work is never done. Two years of modernity. Great progress is already underway with a revamped. A revamped central Siberian plan, both in it and our nation, are rather outdated. If we want to someday become a great economic power, we need to modernize it at unprecedented speed. Our government will invest in both public and private enterprise, with the goal of promoting rapid technological development as a part of the industrialization project. Let's just see how many patents our entrepreneurs can follow over the next two years. Not enough. That's my answer. Uh, choppers. Ooh, yes. And then scientific stuff. Yes, please. Minus point for one is not enough. Oh, I can make basic going to go up soon. Research facilities, we're working on it, working on it. Uh, admin efficiency is 6.66, which is a great number. Industrial expertise is getting there. We're getting there. It's just going to take a lot of time. That's all it is. The best outsiders, huh? You know what? I can do that too. Why not? This one's next. All these others are not bad, but we don't have the political power from right now. And Ad Astra, which would be very good. Way more growth. Inflation will increase, of course, though. More GDP. Poverty will begin to rapidly improve. And then we will also get rid of... Actually, that's not bad. It's not great, though. Um, this organized economy is really bad. Well, that's next. Central Siberia has developed beyond the <clears throat> wildest dreams of even Boris Pasternak. The factories are more plentiful and well-run than ever. The people's spirits and work ethic are an all-time high, and the economy runs smoothly enough that somehow both the workers and businessmen are satisfied. Sure, we still have problems as you do everywhere else, but, but the central Siberia has become a bastion of material success and happiness in the world, which sorely lacks both of those things. We've reached the moon, now to the stars. If you want to go to People's Music Festival, please go right ahead, but we're going to go and do scientific research. So now that we make way more political power, we're going to start doing more idealistic stuff, so... Humanity is capable of whatever, but it's mine too. Never mind, education next. Huh. It's not enough. Well, it's all ahead of time, of course. You can't do this one either, which sucks. So, anti here? Why not? 21 is not enough either. Uh, so, a plus of uh, 1.2 billion, 1.7% growth. Growth is not very good. We're probably just trying to limit us so we don't get too high here. Screw it. Research science? More science. Oh. Connecting and expand the research fields? Yes, please. Some more time ports? Yes, please. A sub reliable power supply, yes please, as well as fortify Sibgrad. Oh, you betcha. So we did this tree. We've almost done with this tree. I want to wait for to do that one, because we don't need that immediately yet. Uh, cultural missions. Russia has been stuck in the 40s for decades now as nations around the world move forwards into the modern era of today. They've evolved scientifically, culturally, and economically in ways that seem to seem radical to us. We should send our diplomats to these foreign countries to explore how their societies change and what changes we might expect in our own culture and society as we industrialize and shift into the global middle and possibly even upper class. All this such preparation will allow us to preempt some of the worst growing pains.
Um, no, that's not. I do, do you not want to increase cynicism. Bribe the opposition. No, this one greatly decreases modern's popularity, so it's absolutely not worth doing. Uh, recruit the best outsiders. We could do that. We don't really need that one. Decreases our authority. No. Well, we might need it for idealism actually. Promote the elites. Actually, we'll probably do this one instead. I don't want to decrease our authority, so. And we'll come back down here and probably do the next one. Ad Astra. Oh boy. The modern house of wisdom. Uh, oh, there goes the Kutz. They finally unified in 66. In the middle of Tomsk. <clears throat> a new unfamiliar sight made itself known to Valerie's eyes. It was a house of wisdom, as a modernist term did. A place where everyone and anyone can find employment, where those left bereft of a dis dismissal can apply for benefits. A style was thoroughly modernist, different from the rest of the old city uh, that surrounded it. Curves and lines that go up and under the, and loop and loop. Its rotating doors breathe warm, air-conditioned flurries that seem to embrace Valerie's soul. Uh, just in time, too, Valerie was, until very recently, a manager in one of the Republic's coal mining concerns. Uh, the company was in dire straits, however, and they let him go along with the rest of his subdivision. He had to spend a few nights pacing around his little room while his wife delivered his job to school, and from on, then on proceeded to her own work. Valerie loved her with all his heart, but it was unfair to her to bear the burden of factory work, not least because of the low pay. Clamping down on his feelings of shame, Valerie pushed the door handle and stepped into the building. The sight of it was dazzling. He had never seen ceilings curve and drop so suddenly. Before him were counters behind with which the keepers of this place resided. Men and women in the sharply tailored suits who worked with tireless energy and joy. Valerie signed to one of them, an elegant young woman in her early 40s, wrinkles barely showing. Uh, he said, uh, confusedly. How can I help you, she said, her energy infectious to her smile. I want to apply for a job. I lost money a few days ago, and I don't know what to do. Have you prepared your documents? Uh, no, Valerie blushed. You should have known better. A sly smirk emerges on the woman's lips. Well, here's what you need to prepare. Valerie gets the job. If only it was that easy. Foreign Policy Council. Um, but happy May now, everybody. Happy, happy, happy May. Hoping for the best. Yeah, we'll keep going down this way because we want to reduce admin stream, but the Foreign Policy Council. As our nation rapidly approaches preeminence among the various Russian powers, we will increasingly find ourselves in contact with foreign powers, whether diplomatically, economically, or even culturally. We should assemble the greatest minds of our nation in a council to help chart a course for the nation and in managing the interests of the various powers we'll be working with and against in the future. The council will further help us decide what kind of foreign policy goals we should have with our neighbors and interests abroad, like encouragement of foreign investment, technology sharing, and mutual economic agreements. Not a bad idea. And apologies for speaking very quickly, but it is who I am. Now what for now? 49% is not bad. Propaganda. We could use more uh, force part honestly, but let's save it for more stuff later in the future. Minus 0.53 is not enough. <laughs> Oh, but for the best, though. <clears throat> our state has grown strong as a contender for reunification. And many warlords have taken notice. As our arms continue their unstoppable march in nearly every direction, several small warlords have contacted us about the possibility of truce or even a small peaceful reunification. If we were able to negotiate these peaceful returns to these smaller nations in the fold, that would greatly increase both our standing and the value of these regions, given that they will suffer no damage from war. If you wonder about music to my ears, please go right ahead. Uh, we should open up diplomatic channels with these smaller neighbors and see what, they, what we might be able to do. Marvelous work. the best outsiders wait why would decrease it so, uh, yeah no we're good modernist aligned we have bureau of integration and we still have a basic army but we'll work on that still arriving norals which is great Import heavy machinery oh you bet we will taking forever over all that stuff but whatever Group attack helicopters, transport helicopters. Foreign Policy Council. They analyze the capabilities of our neighbors, primarily those in Russia. We have assembled a new group of Foreign Policy Council. Those who are possibly friendly and those who could be threats must be identified for now for use later. We have to know if one regional government is more likely to attack us than the other. Foreign Policy Council is also focused on analyzing the military, scientific, and economic capabilities of our neighbors as well. Intelligence will come in handy so we can ensure that we will be stronger than our neighbors while not finding useless endeavors. Only the experts can decide what is best for our foreign policy, and that's why we place only those who are elite in their field on the council. With hope, the council will grant us huge amounts of intelligence and prepare us for the reunification of Russia. Always trust the experts. Preparing for the worst. By failing to prepare, one is preparing to fail. Although we have only hopes of peaceful reunification, we must prepare for the possibility that negotiations will end in war. Plans must be drawn up for the various scenarios that might play out, such as a northern armored assault or southern infantry thrust. Any good diplomatic negotiation is backed with the implication of a nation's military power, so we should have our forces at the ready on our borders. Should uh, diplomacy break down and war is declared, we will be ready to move in at a moment's notice. Good, as we should. 
Political thought. Get a lot of political power. Mm, power grid. Let's do the one with more for more war support. We could really use that. We'll get more weekly stability as well. Uh, what is this one? Promote the elites. Might as well. Now we're swimming in a lot more political power, which is great. Truth undisclosed. <clears throat> We're not shackled. Our republic stands for all that is good in humanity. We stand for truth, justice, and democratic self-governance. There are nations of people in Russia who are fundamentally opposed to these concepts. We seek for nothing more than to enslave all the peoples of Russia under singular dicta dictatorial rule. We are those who stand against them, the righteous and the moral, whose obligation is to spread such virtue to all of Russia. Our foes cannot expect to hold us off for long. As their debt continues to rise. Of course, we will have elections as well, but I'll probably just do some funky stuff with those elections stuff to make sure we do okay. Wow, we actually have a good amount of growth finally. That is 30% uh, of our GDP, which is fine. And yeah, overall, not bad. I don't mind expanding the power grid too. That'd be really good for more stability, because we'll need that. Increase the state GDP. Man, the amount of production units we have keeps fluctuating drastically, man. Still slowly going up. Where are we at? Four months, point five one. It's not enough. <coughs> she was unshackled. And the, expanding the court. During the Unification Wars, their military wasn't as powerful as their neighbors. The fight against the separatists and the rogue generals was made difficult by a rump military. It's been a rough start for a Republican army, but one that must be addressed if we are to defend the territory we have conquered and continue expanding. Our military deficiencies are many, and there isn't any simple fix that will rectify it. The military as a whole must be strengthened. Marshal Shapshnikov has put it forward a set of recommendations on which all salons have been agreed upon. Such improvements will be expansive, expensive and time-consuming, but necessary we wish to one day reunite Russia. So it's a necessary evil. Oh, we, got, we finished all the Norals stuff. Nice. I want to wait till we get another one here. Oh, come on. Ten is not bad. Rudimentary is still not good enough, though. Oh, defense. Oh, facilities? Yes. 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 This is why we save the political power so we can do this immediately. So, Urkuk did win up here. It's fine because I don't really care. 30 divisions for now is probably good enough, so we probably don't need any more. Elections are soon upon us. If you remember that, please go ahead. Let's show the people we mean business. Agriculture mechanization is next. Because it'll help with poverty as well. And that's minus 0.5. It's not bad. Better weapons. Uh, improved organization. Why not? Uniting a region of central Siberia was no simple task. It required the collective efforts of thousands of soldiers and officers working in tandem in order to subdue the smaller warlords on our borders. The experience these soldiers and officers have gained thus far will prove vital as we attempt to improve our military in the future. We should tap on this experience through the promotion of our most experienced and successful officers and soldiers. Additionally, we should begin interviewing our soldiers to see what they believe needs improvement in our armed forces. 33%. 4% growth. Your list boss is not as size as it used to be, but whatever. We're doing what we can here. Minus 0.5. Come on, man. More, 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 more. Once we get rid of deficient administration, uh, that would be really good. It just will get good to get rid of that. Common core reforms. Alright. So promote the elites, it's fine. Even more energy, yes please. Expanding the core. Common core reforms. Shapshnikov stacked the papers on his desk and leaned back. Did he actually manage to get all four of the salons on board with his reforms somehow? As was the norm, a few backroom meetings, cups of tea and IOUs were necessary to reunite or unite each slot under his ideas for the military. But at the very least, Shapshnikov acknowledged that they all had reasonably good, reasonably good military plans regarding their ideological differences. The behind-the-scenes work was beyond him now, but ahead came the actual task of serious military reform. Shapshnikov was aware of the importance of his job as a core Republican army would serve as the foundation and bulwark of the Republic's defenses. Neither here nor the government could afford to let pesky squabbles hinder the modernization reform of the military, unless everything he and the people of Central Siberia had worked for would be lost. At least we all agree on something. Better weapons. Though a rifle is the most important tool the modern soldier has at his disposal, and the quality of a soldier's rifle is as important as the training he receives to use it. Even the greatest soldier armed with a musket wouldn't be able to do half as much damage in the field as an untrained conscript with a Kalashnikov. The more lead one can saturate the battlefield with, the greater the chance that something or someone is going to be hit with said lead. Our enemies across the border are surely working on newer, more advanced weapon versions of the rifles they already have, and if we allow them to advance significantly past us, we may find ourselves overpowered in the field. Which would not be a good thing. I don't need this anti air as well. Oh, 
We're definitely gonna need more output too. We don't have enough. Better weapons. Not stronger armor. One of the most important lessons learned from the Second World War was the necessity of a modern tank war. Panzers with more powerful and guns and stronger armor than we'd ever seen before broke through our lines as if they were made of putty. We face similar difficulties today. The warlords who have managed to acquire some portion of the former Soviet Union's tank stockpile or figured out some way to produce their own are often the warlords causing us the most damage and casualties. An armor corps will be vital ensuring a continued military supremacy. If I already really feel you betcha. Or back up. And we're very close to having only half of our population living in poverty. Gorbachev. I hate Vyaka so much. And Mario's here. Mario. They're probably going to lose. Cynicism. 59%. Not bad so far. <coughs> Alrighty. Republican Eagles. Steel Caravans. I like Steel Caravans quite a bit. <clears throat> Every man or every army marches on his stomach. And if you can't supply an army's ravenous appetite, it'll die. Living in the rough and buried lands of Russia, logistics can be made a challenge. Spy lines often run long and snake-like, leaving them vulnerable to attack. The terrain and weather can also make transportation of materials and goods a slow and arduous task. With snowstorms and mud are very real and present threat. Mitigating these threats through our supply lines through the use of new technology is vital in this regard. Improved trucks with all the terrain cap cap capability. Alongside trains which can pull even larger loads will surely increase our logistical capacity. Nice. A very basic army. Oh, what was that? Worker training? Oh, yes, please. About a week left. That's not bad. 4.33%. 39% is not good. Whatever. 1.24 billion. 1.2. We still have a yearly plus loss, which is very nice. 30 divisions, never enough, of course, but whatever. Worker training with expertise. Not bad. Republican Eagles. For decades, the Luftwaffe has unleashed hellfire upon a Russian brother in the West. There isn't a single Russian in these lands without a story to tell about the bombings. Men and women swept up in the fires from the cities. Villagers seen the village entirely destroyed in single carpet bombings. Oil fields are alive for days after a strategic bombing, all stores that support the common logic. If we lose a war in the air, we lose a war and we lose it quickly. Aerial supremacy is of the utmost importance if we are to reunite Russia one day and combat Germany. So currently, our Air Force is a joke. Uh, we need to produce more planes and better quality planes if we are to catch up, and we need to do so rapidly. Without even doing anything here, we're doing the most popular. And with most authority, with the Decembers doing okay as well. So now we're 60%, which is not a whole bunch, but you know, it could be worse. Sixty-seven, of course. Go here. Grab some of that too. Anything else up there? Yes, expand the university system. Where are we at for research? It's not high enough yet. 14.62. God dang, that's high. So are the free men. No man is entitled to the blessings of freedom unless he's be vigilant in his preservation. Every great republic is to survive. We'll need to greatly expand our army and capabilities. Though our small beacon of democracy has come a long way, the unification wars are far from over. As long as Russia remains divided, we must prepare for the possibility that even against fellow democratic nations, we will have to fight. We must endeavor to field an ever more powerful, larger modern military capable of dealing with every possible threat. That's more attacking and way more defense. Very good. And how much we get a day? We're almost two. New elections on the horizon. If you want to about those, please go ahead. And which, of course, we're going to go with the modernists. Alright, so all this is going to be a bunch of crap for us. So, uh, if we don't win, then I'll, I'll basically just use cheats. I don't care. I'll just end the episode here, and I'll do all that anyways. Because I'm not going to spend political power on this stuff. I mean, uh, does it make does it make sense? No, maybe we'll spend some political power. I don't know. Let's take a look. We'll see. So we really need Kemerovo and Krasnoyarsk and Novosibirsk. Uh, Kemerovo, definitely Krasnoyarsk. Kemerovo. Just press voting. Kemerovo. Campaign in Kemerovo. I like the idealism. Krasnoyarsk. No, we don't know not. If it goes well, it goes well. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And we'll make sure we save moderates. Minus 0.6 is not enough. 
just literally not enough. Um, the New Republican Army, of course, we have Val uh, Valkyries of the Sky. We fly where we please. The Jotun's chariots, no matter the terrain, the Zealous Elite. War games, modern knights would be good as well. Modernist army would be very nice. Too bad that's the last one we need to get, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Four whole days left. I'll we'll do that one, so it helps increase the idealism as well. Oh, we can't do this one? Why not? Majority approval for ministers of industry, infrastructure, and. Oh, okay, so we're probably going to do this one too. The modern Russian culture. Let's get things up a notch and truly broaden our citizens' cultural horizons. We've already modernized Russia's visual arts, theater, and film science. Why not encourage a rapidly evolving music industry, which is currently developing a new techno electronic or uh, style? Oh, popular with a uh, younger station or younger uh, population. If you want to buy better research facilities, please go ahead. Why not support new radio stations and hold music festivals? Let's upgrade our cuisine too. We can hold fairs and special markets featuring exotic foods and demonstrating other nations' cultural traditions and celebrations to expose their people to a wide range of foreign experiences. The people of Central Siberia will be the most well-versed and culturally enlightened people in the world. Not bad. <clears throat> Roughly two a day, and how are we going down here? Now we're okay. Yeah, that's actually not bad right now. Why is it 56%? I don't really want to suppress any voting. Campaign? Uh, how are we looking? Kimarovo, Kimarovo, Kimarovo. Like I said, the Siberian plan looking pretty good. Steel care events are very good. Minus point or well, minus twenty percent supply consumption. Very strong. Stability, greatly increased modernist popularity in one area. That's literally every single focus we can do right now. Well, I'm not sure what we can do. Voting campaigns in Tomsk. Where's, how's Tomsk looking? 46% Tomsk. The vast alards and voting come robo or toms. Um the majority approval. How do we get more approval then? I mean yeah, cynicism is a thing, but you know what? I'll figure it out. If I have to use cons commands, then so be it. But let's read through every single focus then. Valkyries of the Sky. As Air Calvary has proved one of the most impressive military innovations of the past several years. Used extensively during the South African War, their utility and efficiencies led to its massive adoption of major militaries around the world. If we wish to bring our forces towards military dominance in Russia, we should adopt this new and promising helicopter technology and integrate it into our forces. We have reason to believe that these Air Cavalry units will be vastly increased in combat capabilities. We fly where we please. If we control the skies, we control the war, unfortunately. We don't control the skies right now. Our Air Force is not only pitiful in numbers, but widely outdated, with some of the oldest aircraft having been manufactured as early as the late 30s. German jets and bombers are leagues ahead of ours, several times faster and equipped to fly at high altitudes thousands of meters higher. We needed to research jet engine technology and advance our air capabilities, if for no other reason than to gain a leg up on our neighbors. The Jontun chariots. The future of large-scale land warfare is in armor. Tanks, IVs, APCs, and all the rest are increasingly going to become the standard in this mechanized world of ours. The advantage that thick armor and piercing explosives offer on the battlefield is immense and necessary if we're going to go up against similar units. Ideally, by the time we confront Germany, we should hope to have fully mechanized elite forces to combat Germany's larger Panzer fleet. If not, we may find ourselves in the Second World War all over again. No matter the terrain, historically, geography has been a major limiting factor in warf warfare. A tilting across the river up into a mountain or into a forest will give your enemies a major advantage over you. This holds true even today, however. Modern technology can help mitigate the problem. Come across the river, deploy an AL a VLB. Attacking a mountain position, use modern repelling devices. Attacking into a forest, use air cavalry to smoke them out. Better training te and technology. Better training and technology will ensure that in no cases will these natural impediments ever slow us down. It's the zealous elite. Instead of making an even larger, more cumbersome military, we should instead be focusing on creating a smaller, better trained, and better equipped army. The advantage of this is that our forces will pack a heck of a stronger punch in whatever battles they are to fight in, and will also take far fewer casualties as a result of having more experience and material at their disposal. Furthermore, we'll be able to select only the best of our citizenry for the army, choosing only the most loyal and talented. Our new army will be fanatical in its defense of the Republic, bowing hatred to the Republic's enemies and accepting no failure or surrender in the face of overwhelming odds and modern knights. 
One of the greatest draws of knighthood for those in the Middle Ages was the prestige that the rank drew. Knights were elite forces, so distinguished as to be considered a form of lord nobility. We must do the same for our army right here and now. <clears throat> Serving should be thought as the highest honor and treated with the highest respect. We should portray our army as accepting only the best, the cream de la cream. If we can convince people of this fact, then we will be able to greatly increase the number of volunteers to choose from. After all, if the people believe in a path of prestige and respect lives and service, then they will surely enlist. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will probably reunify all of Russia. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.